Good evening and welcome as the Doherty Cup comes to ABD Stadium in Broadmeadows or Broadmeadows Valley Park as it is now known and the teams are on the field for this match vying for a spot in the semi-finals of the prestigious Victorian Cup competition that is the Doherty Cup in white tonight. The Green Gully side in yellow it is Heidelberg United. Looking forward to bringing in this match as uh, both of these teams have now qualified for the national round of 32 in the Australia Cup. It's now their turn to focus their attention, at least on midweek nights, to the Doherty Cup. Glad to be bringing you this match. My name's Steve Curtin alongside me. Good to have you back by my side, Craig Filer. Thank you, Steve. Good evening, listeners. From a, uh, a rather wild uh, uh, Hume Stadium or ABD Stadium or whatever it's now called, Valley Valley Stadium, but it is, is absolutely bitter here this evening. We're way up high above the stands on the gantry and uh, the wind's blowing, but uh, pitch is in fantastic condition. Two fantastic sides that are playing some great football, Steve, and it should be a cracker of a game tonight. That's right. Uh, couldn't agree more with you, Craig, there. And two teams that do play good football. They do match up well against each other, too. They've had some really good tussles in the league over the recent years. But tonight, when it's uh, well, it's all on the line in that uh, cup final atmosphere, we'll see what's in store. And the lineups are in Stephen Downs' Green Gully. They're the nominal home side tonight. But they are in the white kit. Liam Driscoll resumes in goal. The back four is... Jordan Lampard and the central defenders Kao de Godoy and J James Doyle, Jeremy Walker at right back, midfield trio of Jared Abitou, Matty Crooks and Josh Hope. Up front, Alex Salmon will be supported by Gianluca Iannucci and Mamadi Kamara on the wings. Meanwhile, for George Kitsakis' Heidelberg United, it's the start in goal for Nick Eris. The back four is Dion Nikolaitis, Malin Roberts, Aidan Fedahajic and Joey Franich moving into midfield. Dom Fowler, Brian Summerskill and the captain tonight, Adrian Zara. Mayor Josh Pin and Sean Ellis will support Luka Ninkovic in attack. Pleasure to have your company tonight and we are now underway as Jeremy Walker slams that ball forward. Haven't seen Green Gully in this all-white kit too much, Craig, so it's a bit of a different look for me. I have to get used to that and I'm sure the viewers at home will get used to it too and hopefully... It looks okay on the TV with the white versus yellow, but Adam behind the camera is doing his best job to bring you a high-quality production from the highest position, I'm going to say the highest broadcast position out of any NPL ground in Australia. Well, I'm just looking, I think I think well, the planes will be flying underneath yeah, us, Steve, to, to, be, to be fair. Thing. It's it's that high up here, but it, I have to say it's a fantastic uh, uh, position to watch uh, football, although if you're... Uh, if you don't like heights, it's probably not the place for you. But, um, yeah, this should be a cracker tonight, Steve. Two sides in, in great form, um, both in the in the top six of the uh, of MPL Victoria. Um, and one of them will go through to the uh, the Doherty Cup semi-final uh, next week, I think it is, isn't it? Or next week or the week after. So uh, both teams will be wanting to uh, continue their good form. A uh, nice little cup run always does, uh, always does wonders for, for league form as well. A couple of players rested for, for either side tonight, but there should be a cracker. That's right. As our match referee tonight, Ross Clark in the long sleeves. He could have got himself a pair of gloves perhaps as well, but he is, he is our uh, man in the middle tonight. So we're just going to adjust our sound and make sure that you can hear us nice and clear as Jeremy Walker slams another ball forward to Marmani Kamara, who flicks it on and succeeds in doing so to Aidan Fedahajic. Be a throw. Dion Nicolaitis, the left back tonight. He's been a consistent performer, the youngster for George Katsakis' side this season. Goes out of play in front of the grandstand, and it's good to be back out here at Broadmeadows Valley Park because that facility over there is fantastically set up. It's a shame there's not a few more people here. I thought it was going to be a really full house, as we were saying. The car park is quite packed, and then you come in, and there's not too many here. Well, as What's the problem there is Nick Harris does get there in the end ahead of the advancing Josh Hope who starts in a more conventional role for him in midfield. We've seen him playing as a false nine this season but given that Alex Salmon is fit and starting tonight that means that we'll see the former victory man playing as part of that midfield three with Avatu and Crooks. Now here's a chance for the Burgers on the far side. Nicolaitis. Combining with Pin on that far side, looking for Ninkovic. 
Yeah, I'm with you there on the uh, on the crowd, Steve. I've, having said that, it is a like I said, it is a bitterly cold uh, uh, winter's day down here in uh, in Victoria. Um, so probably uh, probably the best place to be is uh, is in the house, or with the TV on, with a glass of wine in your hand. What do you reckon? It's not a bad Tuesday night, isn't it? I think that's what Adam would prefer. Or, uh, yeah, he's nodding. He's, I think that's where he'd like to be. But uh, hey, midweek football under lights on a fant in a fantastic uh, facility is uh, is nothing better. Have a look at the quality of the playing surface here as well. A lot of pitches starting to be a bit cut up, look a bit worse for wear this time of year. Not this ground. No, it's beautiful. It's uh, plenty of grass, as flat as uh, flat as it can be, and uh, yeah, should be a cracking game. Really looking forward to this one tonight. Two good football insides, as I said. You know, uh, Heidelberg played their four games, Steve. Uh, round four, they uh, they defeated uh, Geelong 4-0. And then uh, on the road again to Altona East and, and won that one convincingly five. Uh, Ballarat three one and then uh, a win against Dandy Th Dandy Thunder. So in their four games they've uh, they've scored four and just conceded the one. So they're in uh, in top form and and that form takes them into uh, as we said Steve into MPL Victoria as well because they're uh, they are the f the the form side at the moment aren't they? Well they are and he's pin striding forward and he's been a busy player. So far has Josh Pinn, the number 17, operating on the left-hand side of the attack. They've got some good plays in the wide areas tonight in Sean Alice and uh, Josh Pinn, who's an informed player. I haven't seen a lot of Pinn before, but he's, uh, he's impressed me in the early minutes here as Nikolaite is coming forward. Walker in space. This is Crooks using the full width of the park, combining with Kamara, and they lose out again. Hangs in the air, looking for pin was uh, Zara, and it's going to be a throw to the gully side. Could be a cagey, I just like it could be a cagey one early. No point playing uh, too open at the back, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. What, what were your thoughts in a, a cup match in a midweek night such as this, Craig? If you were the coach, would you be looking to play it a little bit safe in the early phases? No, I'm not sure I would still. I think I'd probably want to go. I, I really wouldn't want to go into extra time <clears throat> um, yeah. at this stage of the season with a game. And Gully, remember, are playing on Friday night as well. So the last thing they want is um, additional time at the end of this game. So um, I'm sure for the first first uh, 20, 25 minutes, I think it'll be very cagey, as you said. And then I think it'll open up a little bit because no, nobody wants that those extra minutes at this stage of the season. It's about protecting, protecting the legs and doing just doing the minimal now to uh, to get them over the line. Remember, there's only what eight games left of normal NPL season. Indeed, lots of good shout in. Striding forward <coughs> is Dom Feller, who made a really uh, precise interception. In the end, it is a burgers throw in front of the entry gates over on the far side. This is Pin. He can turn and face forward. He's running at that gully defence. He goes down. No free kick given. George Katsakis is asking some questions right in front of us of Mr. Clark, our official. Now here's Iannucci running at Roberts. This is bright opening for gully. Iannucci, will he try the shot? Oh, Harris gets two hands to it. Lampard on the follow-up. Well, two saves in a matter of seconds for Nick Harris. And that was the first two shots on target of the match there. Gully on the counter attack, and well, George Katsakis is not impressed, as we said, Craig. No, he's not happy with uh, the referee's decision on letting that uh, that foul or perceived foul um, uh, in the uh, just on the edge of the uh, the Green Gully box, which uh, resulted in a in a transition for Green Gully and a shot away. I think uh, if that had gone in, I th think George may have got a little bit bal more ballistic than he has, but. Um, yeah, he's still going. Yeah, he's he's not happy, is he? No, he's he is not tethered. He's not remained tethered to that paint of the technical area. It is no <laughs> match for George tonight. He's marched all the way up to have a chat with the fourth official about this. And well, it looked like it might have been a foul from here. I think it probably it we certainly looked it from here, Steve. Yeah. But nonetheless, they do win the foul now, and the Scotsman Sean Ellis is standing over it. We know he's got exceptional quality in his delivery and the target tonight providing the height in the attack is Ninkovic. Turn to the back post and Driscoll comes in to take that one easily. 
His first touch of the night in the all orange goalkeeping uniform. And he's a man that we saw score a stunning goal when we were together at a match at Green Gully earlier this season. Could we see that again tonight from Kayo de Godo? One of the most unlikely match winning goals we saw that night. Yeah, it was a hell of a, hell of a strike. And uh, he's, uh, he's been struggling, hasn't he? He hasn't been in the side for. For, for a few weeks and uh, he's, he's back in tonight I think and uh, hopefully looking to cement his uh, position in there for the for the remainder but that was yeah that was a hell of a goal that night Steve yeah well Luke Adams who's been preferred for large parts of this season in central defense he's one of the substitutes tonight there's some good quality on the bench as well for Green Gully tonight with Luke Adams Luke Jago Matthew Fletcher Ethan Brooks and the sub keeper David Thompson while for Heidelberg United, we've got on the bench Brendan White. The new signing, Costa Petrato, so perhaps mm. we'll see him. Kane Shepherd, who's an informed player. Uh, Anthony Theodoropoulos and Owen Ashton. So both benches are running super deep. So if reinforcements are required to get one of these sides over the line tonight, both coaches have got a really good set of options to go to when needed, as long as they're not frozen to the bench, cause, which they could be <laughs> in these conditions tonight. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, both good, good, very strong benches to come off, and I think it's there's a little bit of uh, um, preserving players as well, Steve. As I said, you're coming into the the big end of the season now, uh, the last thing you want is uh, is players is players overdoing it. Uh, need to protect them as much as they can. Like I said, it's a big turnaround for for Gully, isn't it? And a game tonight, and then another big game on uh, on Friday night. Um, 72 hour turnaround and yep last thing they want is extra time and, uh, and penalties tonight so I think Steve Jones will be looking to uh, to get this done and dusted as uh, as early as they can that's right well I, I think the Friday night kickoffs are a great thing but they're not a great thing when you've got a midweek nah. mid game as well I'm surprised it's gone ahead actually I'm surprised that they haven't uh, rescheduled that game to you know Saturday or Sunday you know last weekend we had never had any Sunday afternoon games did we it's the first time yeah. I can remember this sun, uh, this season where we haven't had a, a Sunday afternoon fixture Salmon's first time ball is well, it found Walker but not within the parameters of the playing field throw in to the Burgers so Breeze here tonight is oh, it's coming across the ground it's a little bit swirly at least up here. Not really favouring either the goal in a massive way. And here's De Godoy. Looking to stride forward in the long sleeves. Another man in long sleeves is Lampard. To another in hope. Heidelberg happy to retain a solid defensive shape. That's a raking switched pass by Hope. Finds Kamara. Looking to turn and come inside. He might have caught one or two Heidelberg players off guard, and he went through a whole sea of yellow shirts there, did Mamani Kamara. Well, I'm so used to seeing him taking the ball and trying to get out into wide areas and supply a, a low ball in. Well, not on that occasion, and I think some of those Heidelberg players were taken by surprise. Yeah, uh, good good feet from uh, from Kamara there. Shane, the shot didn't get away, but um, good good start. Great ball from uh, from Josh Hope in the first instance to get things going. And Sean Ellis on the ball there. He's uh, he's really come back to form in the last couple of weeks, hasn't he? Since he's come back from his uh, from his injury. Yeah, he's one of the players to watch when he's in form, and particularly if Heidelberg can make that charge to have a finals campaign, he's one of the players to watch that could really light up the final series in NPL Victoria this season. Now, it's a good tussle here on the far side with Walker eventually winning out. Support from Kamara. Mamadi Kamara. Well, he might have dwelt on that ball a little bit too long. Big tackle from Doyle. As the ball got away from him. Pin with the touch. Back to Nikolaitis. Franich. This is better from the Burgers. Alice dropping into a central position. Pin is out wide. Nikolaitis. This is Joey Franich. Oh, the first time pass. It was a good idea from Sean Ellis. Didn't find its intended target. It runs all the way through to Liam Driscoll and his father Ollie will be watching over in Perth tonight. Hope you're enjoying the match and enjoying our uh, commentary as well, of course. 
Looks like a slight change to um, Heidelberg's normal formation there, Steve. They looks as if uh, Adrian Zaha is coming into uh, the right back position, and um, Joey Franich is going in there as a six, uh, or potentially an eight. So I'm not sure whether what what they see in that or what the uh, the reason is for that. But it's certainly not uh, Joey Franich, which is his normal position at right back. Um, yeah, it's taken me by surprise. We'll as well. Keep an eye I, on that one. Yeah, I, I had those two. Two players uh, transposed in the positions they've actually started. Oh, ball. that is a crafty touch by Ninkovic. Zara now looking to get around Lampard. He comes inside. The gully defence standing off. Now Franic, that man you were speaking about, playing just in front of the back two. And then after receiving the ball, he drifts off to cover at left back. Now this is Pin getting the ball into the box. And Ninkovic with the header. It loops towards goal. Well played by Driscoll to keep it out. Summer skill now. Well, that's crafty by him. Plays it inside. And Alice. Oh, skill he goes, Alice. Oh, sensational skill. Penalty. And it will be a spot kick. Well, it was made up by the craft of Summer skill on the right hand side. He sent his opponent one way, then the other. And then a deft touch to receive that ball from Sean Alice. It's a fantastic touch from Sean Ellis in the, in the box to, to, to even get it under control and, uh, and then to get it out of his feet and. Um, unfortunately for uh, for Green Gully, it's caught him and it's a it's a penalty. Well, that was a good as a good as a first touch as he would ever hope to see. Will be the man in the captain's armband, Adrian Zara, who's coming off a goal on the weekend, which saw his side get the three points at Paisley Park against the Magic, which was good revenge for them being defeated on their own pitch earlier in the season. Now, referee's whistle sounds and is Zara. Can he send the keeper the wrong way? He does! A well-taken spot kick. Fainted left, went right. Easy as you like for Adrian Zara. 1-0 to the Burgers. Yep, good penalty. Good penalty. Good move from uh, from Heidelberg, as you said. Uh, great play down the right here from uh, Brian Summerskill. Ball into the box. Fantastic control from uh, from Sean Ellis, um, unfortunately it was a penalty and nicely slotted away from uh, from Adrian Zaha. George Katakis here, uh, very happy with that, so uh, what are we? Yeah, well, early phases of this match and first blood to Heidelberg United who really haven't... Now we'll see the game open up, Steve. Well, that's right, yeah. I think that's what, that's what we needed as, yeah. as the neutrals here on the... 20 foot high scaffold, it's exactly what we needed and we've got that now and we've got an offside. 20 foot? Against, against Green Gully, sorry, 20 metre, 20 metre, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we've got altitude sickness getting up here. And you say you could bring a packed lunch to come up here but you can just go over to the canteen. It's kind of the best cuisine that I've tasted in NPL for a while before the game tonight at an NPL ground. Avatu's header, it finds Alex Avon, who hasn't been too busy so far. Ian Nucci, and that ball runs too long, and through to Feta Hajic and evaded the outstretched foot of Josh Hope. And you'll notice around the outside, with it being the Doherty Cup, and there are uh, some representatives here from Football Victoria tonight. We've got the ball boys and ball girls around the, uh, uh, the ground, which we, uh, we don't see very often, Steve. Good night to come out and be in the open air and the great outdoors out here in Broadmeadows Valley Park for those youngsters. And, uh, well, well, all I can say is hopefully that'll keep the game flowing even quicker when we get to the end of each half. It'll be, you know, no time required to be added on so that we can get back inside and get warm again. You wouldn't have it any other way, Steve. That's right. We uh, certainly jumped at the chance when this match came up. And it, it is interesting how this match has come about. And if you are wondering why there's a playoff to get into the semi-finals of the Doherty Cup, well, of course, may or may not know that the Australia Cup qualifying in Victoria doubles up as the Doherty Cup. And with uh, previously Victoria being awarded four places uh, for its member federation clubs, whether that be the State League, the NPL or what have you, to qualify for the national round of 32. Victoria's had their quota up to number to five in total. So that meant that we had uh, a round of uh, 10 matches, or a round of 10 clubs playing five matches, five winners getting through 
to the national phase from Victoria. But of course, that meant that we finished with five clubs and five doesn't go into four. So these two clubs were drawn out of the hat to play in this playoff match to get into the next uh, match, which is the semi-finals. So the semi-finals aren't far away. The winner of this one has already been drawn to play against the Bentley Greens in that match. Whistle on play there. I'll just continue with this monologue. And uh, the other two teams getting through, Oakley Cannons and Avondale, they will play each other in the other semi. So they are not only the uh, not only the five teams that have qualified for the national round from Victoria of the Australia Cup, but they've also qualified for the uh, Doherty Cup semi-finals. Uh, those three clubs and whoever wins tonight. And the, uh, the final is not far away. The final will be played on August the 7th. So something to look forward to. It should be a nice little showpiece when that comes around, the Doherty Cup, something that is steeped in history. Yeah, I think it's important that uh, with the, the history is uh, is obviously a, the Australian Cup is back as, as the original Australia Cup this season as well, which is uh, uh, always good to see. Well, here's Mamadi Kamara. He's started a long, long time ago, Steve, back in... Uh, in the Back in November, Octo uh, October, November, uh, sorry, J January of, uh, of of this year, the very first rounds of uh, of the Doherty Cup. It did start back in uh, yep. at those times. Now here's Walker getting an early ball in, and I'll have it to go one over his head. Is Alice for the goal scorer Zara? If you have just joined us, Adrian Zara with the goal from the spot after a incredibly good first touch from Sean Alice. Franich on the charge, playing in, a, as Craig said, a number eight position tonight. This is on the far side is Pin. Fowler. I mean, you can say a goal changes the game, but it, the Hornerberg side haven't retreated after scoring. They've actually had more of the ball than they had before, and that's a good bit of skill by Brian Summerskill. Outstretched. Oh, wow. One or two outstretched legs there, and eventually Gullet. Gully, get away with that one, but that could have been two. That's a fantastic ball in. Uh, little little Cruyff turn on the touchline and a first-time uh, left-footed uh, cross into that danger area. Um, just couldn't get the touch from uh, any of the Heidelberg players, but a um, uh, great passage of play from, uh, from Heidelberg again. Well, into the 21st minute, Sean Ellis standing over the corner kick. That's the first corner of the match so far. They're all waiting for the cross, and it's got some work on that ball as well. Header at the near post. Still the danger isn't cleared as far as Gully are concerned, and they'll get a whistle on play there. A foul against Jordan Lampard, who put his body between his opponent and the ball and wins the free kick, and Gully can relieve the pressure. Yeah, strange one. I'm not sure. Just look at the replay there. Can't see anything that Ninkovic done apart from maybe put his elbows up, but... Um it, uh, it certainly didn't look like it from where from where I was. It's hard to see a lot there. But, um, you know, some of these taller players can be a judge of perhaps being a tad more physical than they might have actually been. And Ninkovic, he's, uh, he's not a massively solid unit, but he's a very tall unit. He's a good player to watch when he does play in the number nine role for Heidelberg and when required because he, he really has a good... Uh, a skill set of bringing other players into the game and uh, he might not score the goals himself but he occupies defenders and causes them a lot of headaches probably doesn't score as many goals as he should for, for someone of his size playing in the position that he uh, that he does Steve for me um, I think when we had uh, George Katakis on the uh, on the football out West show a few weeks ago he was he was saying that that you know he, he needs him to do more um, in the goal stakes, he does a lot of work outside of that, but uh, needs to get on with the goal, uh, in with the goals. Because he's a big lad, isn't he? He is, he is. We've seen, although he's not playing tonight, when Reuven Way is in the side, it's those enormously long throw-ins targeted at Ninkovic has caused a lot of problems. And we saw that earlier in the season. I remember one particular match at Knight Stadium where the Knights just ran out of answers to deal with his long throw-ins from Way aimed at Ninkovic. Just continuously winning the aerial balls and flicking them on to players at the back post. Here's that man, Ninkovic, trying to get into the play now. Lampard getting there first to Godoy. 
on his preferred left foot there. Here's Doyle. No doubt his father Jeff will be watching on tonight, enjoying his son's form this season. And, uh, he has had a good season, James. Recovered from that shocking uh, facial injury that he received in Ballarat in the match against South Melbourne a little earlier this season and he's been a very consistent performer whether it be with Luke Adams in central defence or tonight with K.O. de Godoy yeah, here's Salmon and he's got Ian Nucci out on the left and the one-two Alice tracking back and sliding in Fenerhajic get to the cross first Zara can come away with the ball now sliding in was Ninkovic that ball's going to hang in the air doesn't want to go out though. And in the end, it means that Degotto had no choice but to put the ball out in front of Josh Pin and there you throw to the Burgers. Adrian Zara will go up and take. Yeah, just uh, looking at some of the play there from Gully, uh, particularly in this uh, sort of first 23, 24 minutes of the game, there's a, there's a few long, hopeful balls uh, in behind the Heidelberg. I don't think. That's the answer tonight, uh, given the the wind. Um, you just saw the ball there from Joey Franich get get held up. Um, for me, it would be getting the ball down into those uh, into those thirds and uh, and trying to get in behind Heidelberg rather than playing the ball over the top behind them. Um, but again, I'm not the coach. That's maybe with Steve Downs and uh, and uh, his trusty lieutenant Steve Laurie of uh, of instructed. So. Um, We'll see whether that changes, but they're so used to playing those balls, aren't they, with um, up at their home pitch at Green Gully Reserve. It's uh, it's a lot more open here than it is down at Green Gully Reserve, Steve, although we do get a, a fair wind, but certainly not to uh, go along. See, that, was, that ball from Dahl there, was, uh, if it had gone past, it would have gone out for a goal kick. So just need to be, uh, just need to be mindful of, uh, of those passes in this, uh, in this first half. Breeze here, as we were saying, it, it is coming. Sort of coming, it's coming behind from, us, it's isn't coming it? Coming from the north, almost, yeah. which is not what you associate with the cold winds, of course, in Victoria. But look, I think that's coming straight off the Macedon Ranges. That breeze tonight, just straight off the uh, the ice or the snow up there. Now Walker's cross is decent, looking for Ianucci and Zara, the goal scorer, getting back to do his share of defending and conceding the first corner kick of the night that Green Gully have won. We've got a problem on the far side, though, and Ross Clark's over to assess the situation. It looks like he's trying to assess which player it is. The Heidelberg players currently, well, the substitutes currently off warming up. Might be is it Josh Pinn on that far side. I think side? it is Josh Pinn, yep. Well, he's up and going again. Bit of a grimace, and he's going to continue. We'll await the corner kick from Gianluca Iannucci. The gully players, Doyle and De Godoy and Abitou are likely targets. And that was near Doyle. And oh, oh. It's, well, it's in. It's and a, the flag's up for offside. Oh, I'm not sure how he can be off, Steve. I think I there think. was a man on the line, though. Yeah, there is, definitely. That's a, that's a goal. That's a goal, Steve. Yeah. Well, I think that might that's make. a. I think the linesman's got that wrong, Steve. Well, the gully coaches and staff are all up and about. They're up in arms because they thought that Gully had scored there and equalised. Yeah, that's a Josh Hope with the uh, with the effort turned in by Salmon. The flag on the far side was straight up, and possibly it was straight up in error. Yeah, I think so, Steve. And they look back at that, and um, quite rightly, the uh, the Green Gully bench are, are not happy. Um, while George Kostakis is uh, is over the moon, but um, yeah, definitely. Uh, th look from from where we are, and the replay uh, clearly shows that that's um, they had a player on the line, and the goal should have stood, Steve. Well, Heidelberg get away with one there. Uh, Gully, can they come again? through Kamara. Well, he's done well getting around Nicolaitis. Can he get around another? Well, Roberts was across to knock that one out of play. Interesting. Well, 
on. You don't see well, you don't see goals like that too often. See, the linesman was caught off guard by it as well. Ninkovic, oh, that's a good turn from him. Lampard will get there first. Hope. Kamara. Does he win the free kick? He doesn't. Here's throw to Gully right in front of the players' race. Gully certainly feeling aggrieved there. Goal down and not one all. I think even our graphics on Sportscast had that at one all for a moment there. But if you have joined us, it is 1-0. The goal scorer, Adrian Zara. Now Lampard's cross. It hangs in the air and it's well caught by Nick Eris. Just, uh, well, relative ease in the end, to be fair. Despite the swirly breeze. 21-year-old getting a chance in goal tonight. Brenda White on the bench. Well, that one hangs in the air and Degotoy wins the header. Hope. Lampard. Closed down by Ninkovic, but he... Escapes the advancing player, Iannucci. Scott Lampard still continuing his run. Trying to get through summer skill and Iannucci. Hope wins the header. Apatu. This is better spell for Gully. Apatu gets to the byline. And he was all about the right foot there and that's what cost him getting the cross in. Does win the corner kick though. Yeah, good bit of uh, pressure now from Gully since uh, just before, obviously, they scored the goal. But um, they'll be disappointed that they haven't uh, got an equaliser there, Steve. Well, it was the corner kick that was the route to the disallowed goal after the second ball had fallen to Hope and turned in by Salmon. So let's see what they can conjure up from this one. Iannucci to deliver. Low the front post. Bouncing in front of Walker, who's shoved to the ground by his opponent, which was Fowler. Summerskill put it out in front of Josh Pinn, but it's out wide and Gully can get four players back behind the ball. Franich. And here's Joey. We saw Yvonne Franich around the ground earlier, taking in proceedings tonight. Peter Hajic. Time to pick his pass. Nikolaitis. Pressure from Kamara. Ball goes out of play, does it? Well, it's a free kick, in, the, in fact. will take the free kick himself and he's been told to get it into the box by his coach George Katsakis and he does <coughs> just that that's a good roost that one Ninkovic is the target he wins the header down and Ooh. smashed off the crossbar well it was that close to being 2-0 and again it was that man Ninkovic who causing problems in the box with a flick down header and it was Joey Franich it was a fantastic save from Liam Driscoll, actually, Steve. It was a great head down from Ninkovic, as you said there. I think Joey Frenich had the shot and a, a great finger uh, fingertip save onto the crossbar by uh, Liam Driscoll, hence the reason why uh, Heidelberg have got a corner. But, um, yeah, he's a, he's a handful, Ninkovic, isn't he? He won great header down. Yeah. Well, Driscoll keeping his side in the match. It's in by Summerskill. It's repelled initially by the Gully defence, only as far as Pin. He wants to put it back in himself, perhaps, and he does just that. Roberts is still forward from the corner. Melan Roberts plays it inside, and Gully will get away with it this time as the ball comes out to Josh Hope. He looks inside for options, and he's going to go for the switch. That's a decent ball, too, for Kamara. If he can keep it in and get the cross, he's got Salmon in the middle, but it's a good piece of defending by 
Brian Summerskill getting back to cover after being up the other end. Iannucci will take the resulting corner kick. Third corner kick of the evening for Gully. Got some good comments coming in on the live stream, Craig. Yeah, Steve, it's... Uh I actually forgot we were on uh, Facebook tonight, so it, uh, if anybody has any, got any uh, any comments, please uh, please pop them up. We'll do our best to uh, to, uh, to to get them on. That's it by Yanucci. It's over the top and off the bar. Well, Doyle couldn't have come closer to scoring there. Harris was beaten by the flight of the kick, and here's Doyle again. Well, it was almost a carbon copy. Are we watching a replay in Salmon? So close again. Well, again, that's the corner kicks that are really producing opportunities for Green Gully. Yeah, Nick Harris coming under some uh, some flack there from his uh, from his coach. Uh, obviously, not the normal uh, normal not normal goalkeeper, is he? Uh, Brendan White normally uh, the goalkeeper, but um, yeah, looked at if he flapped a, uh, at a couple there, Steve, uh, and gave an opportunity to uh, to to Green Gully and. Probably should have scored there. If it shouldn't have been one all earlier on, it's the, we could probably be two one up now. But um, it's not. It's still one uh, one nil to Heidelberg. Well, I guess that will, at least for Green Gully, it will give Stephen Down some hope that they're on the right track because they've come close to scoring from these sort of set piece opportunities quite a few times. Well, advantage is going to be paid, but it's going to be pulled up now as Ross Clark is going to reach for the pocket. It's a yellow card for James Doyle, the man who. Almost scored just a matter of seconds ago. Making the somewhat intentional foul there. Taking one for the team. Goes into the book. Yep. Uh, and it is a yellow card for that one for uh, for James Dahl. But Gully have, uh, have really come into this game, Steve, in this, uh, in this first half since uh, since going a goal down. Um yeah, five five minute spell for Heidelberg where they really uh, really pushed, but um, since then it's been uh, it's been certainly gully, hasn't it? It has. It felt like a slow burn early in this game, but since the uh, goal by Zara from the spot, it's really gone up a couple of notches. Now this one's going to hang in the air again by Nikolaides, and again Ninkovic is the target. Crooks with the header away. Roberts is going to send it forward. Well, very speculative. <laughs> you call it a pot shot from that distance. Maybe even further out, too far out to be called a pot shot. Something else. Just a speculative ball forward by Roberts that went all the way through to Driscoll. Now here's Avatu, and he's a player that Gully need to get into the game. I've seen him getting on the ball a little more. Now that's a good ball. Now to Walker from Josh Hope. Walker who will play his 100th game in uh, Green Gully colours this weekend, this Friday night, I'm told, by our photographer here tonight, Mark Avellino, who's down below us trying to do his best to keep warm in these Arctic conditions in Broad Meadows. Now here's Penn, who's shifted over to the right-hand side now. Fella. And summer skill. He thought about playing it down the line. Decided to hang on to it. Now they do go down the line. I think you can see now that um, Gully are starting to uh, to step up a little bit because they've got the uh, Heidelberg got the wind in their face, so it's a little bit harder for them to get the ball in behind. So it's allowing Gully to step up a little bit. Um, I think um, I think they've uh, they starting to get the ball down a little bit on the floor now and working the ball into the uh, into those pockets and then into the wide areas which is what we spoke about five or ten minutes ago Steve well, I don't think they played a long ball since so they must have, well we're not far from the we're coach. not far we're not far away so perhaps the sound has traveled now that's a good touch and the flags up again before Kamara can get a shot on goal and I think he might have got it right that time Salmon with a knockdown Kamara was well placed but we'll catch it on our replay Craig but maybe he was a fraction too far advanced Although yeah yeah I think just just off it's going to be Half a metre, if that, but I think off he was off. Shoulder, yeah. We'll give that one to the linesman. I think he yeah. got that one right. Um, certainly didn't get the uh, the goal 
one right, but we won't uh, we won't dwell on that. It wasn't given. Right, as the players do, we'll move on as well. And he's Pin, who's been he's been a bit of a handful so far for the galley defence. This one's going to run through to the man in purple, Nick Eris. Well, it wasn't the most convincing looking clearance, but it found Nicolaitis, who puts it into the stand, and there's a stat for a member of the crowd there, which uh, the crowd has grown since kickoff in those white and red seats over on the far side. There's at least a few of them occupied now, but as you can see behind the glass, that is the place to be tonight. <laughs> it is very warm in there, and the uh, cuisine is good, and the bar is well stocked. Now, Kamara's kept this one in. Heidelberg don't want to play with fire while well, they're leading 1-0, but they've conceded the possession here to Walker, who puts it in. Oh, looking for the shorter man there. Iannucci and Eris, who just looks like he's maybe a little bit down on confidence at the moment, gets down and grabs that ball. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm not sure how much game time uh, Nick Eris has had, whether he's been playing uh, in the 21s, but it is awful hard for a, for a goalkeeper to come into games when they haven't been playing. Um, uh, into a game of this uh, of this stature, um, I know there was a few question marks asked in the uh, in the club rooms as to to why he was playing. But uh, George Kasakis obviously felt that he deserved an opportunity. But he's um, yeah, he seems to be struggling. And if it was if it was me, I'd be putting as many balls in I can into that uh, into that 18 yard box uh, because he certainly looks a little bit uh, fragile in there tonight. Well, certainly watching if Gully do. And any more corner kicks with both of our sets of eyes from up here to see what happens in those situations because there has been a couple of moments where Eris has been tested from those crosses by Gianluca Iannucci. And here he is on the ball again, the former Melbourne victory youngster Iannucci. This little step over and comes inside to Josh Hope. Hello to Mark who says that Josh looks a cut above. Good to see him back enjoying his football. And he's been a player who's often been forced to start on the bench a lot of the time this season, or even, as we said, as a, uh, a false nine when Alex Salmon's not been in the team. And he's enjoying his football tonight, I can see. Yeah, look, he's a good player. I think he was um, unfairly treated, shall we say, at, uh, at victory by yep. by some. Uh, for, for a kid of, uh, I think, 20 years old, you know, playing in the A-League is never, never easy. Um, but some of the... Some of the uh, abuse and stick that he got, he actually finished it, didn't he? He, he actually stopped playing football for a while because it uh, it was that bad. Um, but it's great to see him back playing football. He is a he is a talented young footballer. Yeah, well, from what we hear, that Green Gully really welcomed him with open arms. They wanted him out there in the green and white, and which did, is all club as well, isn't it? Did um, yeah, did did everything they could to make him feel at home and. Make him enjoy his football because that's what it's all about at the end. That's why we're all here tonight. Now, here's Lampard trying to get Green Gully going forward again. Iannucci, there's that man Hope ahead of him. Iannucci tries to slalom through a couple of yellow shirts but showed too much of the football to the Heidelberg defenders who'd formed a little triangle in front of him to win the ball back. Green Gully enjoying the bulk of possession though now. Here's Abitou. Well, that's a good ball to find Hope, but the flag's up for offside. He did move a little bit too soon there, Josh Hope, as he floated into that outside left position. Just relieved the pressure for the Heidelberg side, who've been pegged back a little bit in the last five or so minutes, and we're going to get towards that half-time break where the coaches are now preparing their team talks in front of us. Uh, Roberts, the former Canadian international, sends it up into the sky. Forward by Avatu. Roberts will get there first, and he's going to clear it. Oh, we almost got a free header up here. Probably closest to Adam behind the camera, who didn't want to go for the ball either, for good reason. And I'm not sure whether he's actually frozen, because he hasn't moved. Give him a nudge, Steve, see if he's still there. No, all good, he's still he's uh, he's still upright. Salmon's ball out here. This is onside this time. Jeremy Walker inside. Crooks tried to, well, he was caught in two minds between heading and bringing that down yeah, the chest, I think, yeah, Craig. I think so, Steve. I think the the first of those probably would have been the right, uh, the right call on that, a header, but he didn't. 
Summer skill. He's motoring forward across the halfway line. Hope is back and does enough to put it out for a throw. Slow it down is the call from George Katsakis. Wise words as the halftime whistle is imminent. Well, it's close to imminent at least anyway. A couple of minutes to go until the players go in the sheds. Well, Degodai is a little bit too physical there and he's being penalised for grappling with Luka Ninkovic. And it's a free kick for Heidelberg and I would imagine another chance for them to float one into the box because that's what they've been doing from all set piece chances so far tonight. Uh, this is definitely going in the box because I've just heard called George Kosakis say get it in the box. So, um, yep. Uh, I think if this doesn't go in the box, one of one of the four, Sean Ellis or, or Brian Summers will be uh, will be in walk into the change rooms a bit earlier than they think. <laughs> well, it will be Alice <laughs> over this one. As we say, we know where it's going now. Roberts is the furthest man at the back post, but Ninkovic is another target as well. It's, uh, well, it's a crafty ball, and Lampard got a piece of it, but not enough to clear it away. And eventually, it comes away. Nikolaides, Franich. All the way back to Fedahajic. Alice, that's good control. And Great looking ball. for the reverse pass. This is Pin. Well, he had a couple of players inside, including Roberts, who again had stayed forward from the set piece. Summerskill now. He's had some good moments tonight, has Brian Summerskill. And this is another one. Is it inside for Alice? And even the referee's gone to the ground there, and Alice's shot goes wide. That's definitely a corner, isn't it? I'm not sure why. I don't know how it wouldn't be. Bit of nastiness down on the touchline at the moment. Green Gully staff don't feel that it should have been a corner, but it was definitely, it was definitely, it was definitely a definite corner. And, well, to be fair, the white and the yellow are a little bit... Not the best colours on the eye, but... Uh, nah, that's... No. I'm sure it came off a white shirt. It, Definitely a. Alex Savin has had his say. Uh, and uh, if our effects might have picked that up, I'm sure that you've enjoyed that at home. I'm sure you would have heard his scouse accent uh, telling the fourth official exactly what he thought of him. He's not a player that I've seen do his nut, Alex Salmon, but <laughs> I, I can see why he would be frustrated tonight. Yeah, look, I think um, I think um, maybe a, a, a chat at half time uh, between between the officials wouldn't go down there, uh, uh, wouldn't do any harm. I think they've been a little bit off tonight. Um, wouldn't say the man in the middle has, but uh, certainly his two uh, two officials um, have made some uh, some strange calls tonight. Well, we are into. First half stoppage time. We didn't see how much time we added on. It must have been the two minutes, but it might have only been one, was it? Well, it was one, Steve. It yeah, was sorry. One, yeah. It, was it was one, one yeah. yeah. I was going to say there hasn't been many delays. As that should be now, and that is Ross Clark reminds the players that it is time to yep, yeah, go and head inside and warm up. And the substitutes going to uh, get ready. As we said, both sides have got some handy talent on the bench night but at the moment at half time it is 1-0 and it's Adrian Zara from the spot and it was a well taken penalty might I add too that is the difference between these two sides at the moment Craig yeah um, good game of football um, good game of football um, plenty of uh, plenty of excitement a few strange decisions uh, Steve Laurie's just going over there to have a word with the officials on his uh, on their way off the pitch, I can't imagine that will be uh, nice and polite. But um, yeah, one nil to Heidelberg. Looking forward to a great second half. Yeah, well, we'll look, uh, look forward to having you company for the second half. Uh, both myself, Steve Curtin, and Craig Filer alongside me, and we'll let you go and put the kettle on for the halftime break. We're at halftime at Broadmeadows Valley Park. It's Green Gully nil, Heidelberg United one.
Testing, one, two, one, two. Testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Testing, one, two.
Hello and welcome back to Broadmeadows Valley Park for the second half of this Doherty Cup playoff match. Teams are back on the field and we are back in the commentary position for the second half. And the halftime score, of course, is 1 0 in favour of Heidelberg United, so it's all to play for for Gully to get back into this match and the first touch there for the number 14. The halftime substitute, Kane Shepherd. The only change at halftime for either side. So a pretty handy player for George Katsakis to be able to bring on. And well, here's an early chance for Gully. It's Kamara. He's got Iannucci in the middle and Hope. And it was blocked by Feta Hajic. Well, it was red alert there. Well, it still might be dangerous here. And here's Crooks with the shot. And it's just over the bar with the outstretched hand of Eris, unable to reach it. The trajectory of the ball saw it also continue on to fly over the crossbar. And George Katsakis is out of his seat in the first minute of the second half to tell his players to wake up, switch back on, because they were nearly undone there. He wants to hang on to this lead. That's why he's brought on the quality player that is uh, Kane Shepard into attack. Just trying to see who the player is that's disappeared or departed from the field. I can't see Luka Ninkovic out there, so it might be a straight swap up top. He's Aiden Fedorajic. Dion Nikolaitis on the ball here. The 19-year-old. Some instruction from his manager. He sends a throw on, flicked on well by Shepard. He's going again, Shepard. It's the ball still in dispute here, and pin goes to ground under the challenge from James Doyle, who is the only man in the referee's book at the moment. Yellow carded for an intentional foul in the first half. First uh, set piece opportunity of the second half will go to Heidelberg United. Brian Summerskill over the ball. The wind has just dipped down a little bit. We've got a helicopter just hovering nearby. Possibly two of them, in fact. Who will be hovering on the end of this set piece from Summerskill? It goes into the back post area. And the header runs through to Driscoll, who gratefully accepts that ball and gets it going again quickly to Josh Hope. And here's Kamara as the outlet again, but Nicolaitis was well placed there. That will please George Kitsakis. The ball goes out, much to the frustration there of uh, Josh Pym. And for the second time this evening, welcome back to the commentary position to you. We've got our hot chocolates here with us and we're all set for the second half. Craig Filer. Yeah, uh, welcome back, Steve. Uh, nice uh, nice warm cup of hot chocolate. Certainly did the... Uh uh, tick the right boxes uh, as we come back in for this uh, for this second half. Well, that's absolutely right. A, uh, a hot drink goes a long way, even if it's just something to hold in your hands and keep warm. Now another chance from the set piece from almost an identical position as earlier. Summer Skill standing over it, looking to. Deliver towards the back post. Header was by Hope. Kamara. Blocked away by Summer School in the tackle and up the field by Walker. Not before the referee's whistle sounded and Ross Clark does award the free kick to Heidelberg United. And Mamadi Kamara doesn't look too impressed, but it will be going the way of Heidelberg and the big men will get forward again. Including Milan Roberts and Aiden Fedahajic. Some really imposing. Big units there, Craig. I'm just looking. Sorry, Steve. But the wind seems to have. Uh, it's gone. Seems to have. The wind has gone. Have, so that's dropped, doesn't that's it? good news for us because uh, although the air temperature is low, it was the wind that made it feel like it was sub-zero up here. It's now back to feeling like it's about three degrees rather than minus three. So that's 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 good news for us and Adam up here behind the camera. Yep, and I think as you said there, Steve, some big boys in there. This is going to go right into. Here we go. It's gone straight in, Steve. All the way through and into the goal for Brian Summerskill. 
No one needed to touch the ball. We had a tremendous view of that. Yeah, right behind us, wasn't it? Uh, I think Sean Ellis was doing his best to try and get a touch in it, but uh, he certainly didn't. And a goal straight from the straight from the free kick for Brian Summerskill. It reminded me of an almost identical goal that we saw scored out here at this ground by Steve Hewitt yes. when he was at Hume. And identical to that went all the way through. No one took the touch. Summer School can be happy with himself there. His celebrations were understated, you could say, which maybe the intent was not to shoot. But, hey, he put it in the right spot. Ask questions of that gully defence. They couldn't deal with it. Driscoll couldn't get there. Waiting for the touch from a Heidelberg player that never came. Now Gully really has it all to do. Kane Shepherd, can he add to the headaches for Stephen Downs? Well, he's put that one wide. Not the quality of attempt on goal we might have expected from him given the form that we've seen him in of late but coming off the bench we can excuse him tonight for being a little bit cold and stiff until he warms into the game Mullen Roberts with the header it goes to Salmon who's dropped into that deep position again going on a run here is Alex Salmon trying to slot the ball through for Hope and Hope with the 360 oh and he forces a good save out of Eris oh. and off the post by Kamara well, luck is not going the way of Green Gully tonight. Well, that was a great ball by Salmon, and the turn by Hope was like something out of a FIFA computer game there, the way he went around with consummate ease as well in the 360. Walker, the danger still present, away by Roberts. Shepherd with a first-time pass for Alice, who's trying to return it for the 1-2. That was a little bit too ambitious, and Degotto is going to mop up, so... Well, Gully couldn't have come much closer to scoring than that in that final attempt that came off the upright from Mamadi Kamara after all that and the earlier shot saved by Eris from Josh Hope. And uh, Alex Salmon, who is the number nine, we've seen him doing that a little bit this season, but dropping back and playing like a playmaker coming out of the, the central midfield area, and he did that with the plom there and unlucky not to have provided an assist. Iannucci plays it in. his Crooks, who's going to need to bring that high ball down. And eventually the danger is abated and Hodderberg can uh, breathe easy again. Yeah, good opportunity that for, uh, for Gully uh, to, get, uh, to get back into the game. 50 minutes down and 2-0. Uh, and I think they uh, they'll they'll be buoyant. They had their chances in the first half, and and clearly they've had one there to to get back in the game. It's just finishing off one of those chances now, Steve. Oh, well, we've now hit the post a couple of times. Doyle with a header, and Kamara and his Kamara again goes to ground. And uh, while well, any appeals for a foul there and a subsequent penalty kick were going to be futile. Free kick going the way of the Burgers. And we just heard George Katsakis making a bit of a positional change. You might have picked that up in your effects, Mike, because he's right in front of us. There's two or three players being relocated into different parts of the field. So it's interesting. At this stage on their 2-0 lead. Now Kamara looking to bring this down in front of Feta Hajic. He's done well here, Marmody Kamara. Walker in support. Heard a voice from Doyle. Well, that one's going to hang in the breeze. And it comes off Nicolaitis in front of Alex Salmon. And Gully will win themselves another corner. Another chance to test Nick Eris under the high ball. And that great delivery that we've seen from Gianluca Iannucci. Yeah, he put a couple of good crosses in in that first period, didn't he? Um, is that called up here, Steve? The uh, 
The actual laptop's frozen. Nothing to do with the internet. I think it's just, I think it's just decided it's too cold. I'm not working. Well, that's <coughs> understandable. Doyle attempting the volley and to Godoy. Wheels away in celebration. It's game on. KO to Godoy. Turning that one home. And the corner is the route to goal for Green Gully. It had been coming. And it is now 2-1. And we're set up for an exciting second half again. Yeah, the reactions from Gully there were uh, were, were a lot uh, lot sharper than Heidelberg, who seemed to be on their uh, on their uh, on their heels. Um, and uh, De Gully got in for a uh, for a, for a tap in from from six or seven meters. Uh, we got a game on again. Oh, we saw both of the central defenders first. Doyle having a swipe at it, and then De Godoy. And De Godoy is for the second time this season we've seen him score. A goal, the big central defender, and uh, both times we've been there in person to see it, so <laughs> it's always good to see that big left foot delivery, and he sends that one forward again for Salmon, who's going to bring it down. He's done well again there, Salmon. Ian Nucci now. He's got support from Lampard. Ian Nucci, that's a good turn from him. Still he goes, Ian Nucci. Heard a voice from Walker on this far side. Plays it into the box, mm. and the spectacular attempt was the... It was Ian Uchi trying to get the bicycle kick. Didn't make connection. Always good to see players willing to take on the difficult, the, the 10 out of 10 degree of difficulty, and he did that there. Just didn't quite make connection. Walker, and here's Ian Uchi. He's picked himself up and dusted himself off. And Pin with the tackle, and Pin's going to try and win the ball back. Ian Uchi still on his feet and rewarded for the doing so. Yeah, well played from Ian Uchi there. Got into a bit of trouble, but managed to keep the ball and recycle it. He's got a good centre of gravity, John Luca Iannucci. I think it helped him there. Now here's Shepard. He loves that first time pass onto the chest of Pin, who brings it down. Put a lot of spin on the ball there. See the rotations of it under the bright lights here of Broad Meadows Valley Park. Here's Hope. Just shielding the ball with the outside of the foot control off the chest of Walker. Ricochets and bounces and comes out to. Jared Abatu, who we haven't perhaps seen as much of so far in this second half. It's a good square ball and over the top by De Godoy. Eris out to claim. Going to see another change here for George Ketsakis' side. It looks like they're getting Owen Ashton ready and he's another dangerous player coming off the bench. Can be damaging. And uh, I think we've got someone else coming on as well, have we? Uh, Anthony Theodoropoulos. Both of those players receiving instructions from George at the moment. Yeah, looks that way, Steve. Shepard looking for support. Summerskill, who's really had one of his maybe one of yeah, his had a good game. best games in yeah. the yellow and black tonight since joining the club at Olympic Village. Franich. Here's that man, Summer Skill again. Great control. Franich for Alice. Gets it on that trusty left foot. Oh, he just couldn't bring it down there. Summer Skill. Crooks. Gully looking to switch play from one side to the other. Walker. This is Hope. Both teams trying to play it around on the floor. Oh, it's, it's good to watch, isn't it? It is, it is fantastic, Steve. It's uh, they're a good football side, but both of these, you know, the, you know, they're uh, two of the two of the best teams in uh, in uh, in MPL, notwithstanding the uh, the others. But they are a very very good uh, get football inside, uh, specifically Green Gully. Uh, they do play the ball and look to play um, the ball on the floor as much as they can. I was speaking to uh, one of our colleagues, Lockie Flanagan, who uh, who did one of their games last week, I think, and uh, and he said it was one of the best football in displays that he's seen for a long, long time. Victor Brinkat commented, thanks, Victor. Gully to win 3-2. Well, we never know. 
Well, what a comeback that would be if that is to happen. You never know. Certainly controlling the bulk of possession at the moment. This is over two now. Lampard into Salmon. Moving the ball around Broadmeadows Valley Park with some style at the moment. Salmon again, dropping deeper to get on the ball. And Crooks. This is Hope. Walker. Salmon. Walker's in a little bit of space out here on the right-hand side. Looking to get around Pin, but Pin's done well, but he's managed to get the ball back again as Jez Walker. He needs to get the cross in, and eventually Pin's going to win the free kick because he had his legs trapped. Yeah, it looks as if... Um, bear trap there. Looks as if that's part of, uh, obviously, the, the, the half-time discussions there, Steve, and... Uh, about getting the ball into Jeremy Walker uh, on this uh, on this near touchline. Does Gully make a substitution? Well, it's a chance for Luke Jago to get on, so not a bad player to bring on. He's been prolific from central midfield this season as Luke Jago. So he comes on to replace Matthew Crooks in a somewhat like-for-like -like in the midfield three, and it's the end of the evening for Sean Ellis, who's replaced by Owen Ashton. Anthony Theodoropoulos will come on to replace Josh Pinn. Who's, uh, looks like he's putting a fair shift out there and he's pretty glad to be coming off for a spell, perhaps. As you said then, uh, good interception. Are you just saying Luke Jago there? Um, joint top scorer for Gully with uh, with six goals this season. Steve has, uh, has certainly... Uh, Certainly added to his uh, to his game this year for sure. We've seen him playing some fantastic uh, some fantastic games for Gully this year. We haven't seen too many central midfielders sitting on six goals. There's not too many strikers sitting on more than six goals so yeah. far this season, really. So not bad going. And you can hear him out there talking to the Chargers already as well, showing that leadership that he possesses. There was a really good long read put out in the preseason by photographer who's here tonight who's doing a bit of a writing piece as well he sat down with Luke Jago and talked about his highs and lows of his career and if you haven't found it that long read by Mark Avellino it is well worth it if you've got the time for a spare half an hour as Doyle has sliced that one over the crossbar and Driscoll looks to the sky as it floats over the net Quite vocal out there. You can see that the players know that there's a fair bit at stake here in this match. A spot in the final four of the Doherty Cup. Only one game away then from a final showpiece final. And that's a good defensive header straight out of the textbook from Kao de Godoy. Fellas ball forward. Away this time by Doyle. On the volley, it's wide by Shepard. Hasn't had his radar since coming on off the bench tonight. Looks like uh, the Green Gully's ma uh, team manager, Ruben Todorowski, is talking to the fourth official about another change. Yeah, it looks that way, Steve. And you would expect that now, wouldn't you? You'd expect both teams to be uh, to making use of this substitutions bench, as I said earlier on, with a, with a, uh, a big eight or nine weeks uh, left of the season for, for both teams. Um, here goes Kamara. Well, he doesn't, doesn't have the in product on that pass. And Nicolaitis is going to come charging the other way. Too much on that ball and easily mopped up by Abitou. He gets it back off Kamara. He's got Walker to his right and he's got hope in the channel if he can get around Feta Hajic. But Feta Hajic stood like a tower of strength there to repel. Salmon hung in the air longest. And Abitou is still there if he can turn and he can't keep it down. Well, it might have just bounced a little bit too high. He couldn't get his foot over the top half of the ball there, and it went out for a goal kick. And we will see a change. Luke Adams is going to be coming on, and a like-for-like like to replace the goal scorer. So a bit of rotation there, and 
Another change as well as going to see Ethan Brooks get some minutes. Iannucci's not running too well. No, he he's looks coming a, off a the field, bit is uncomfortable he? there. Yeah, yeah, looks a bit uncomfortable there. Put a good shift in. Maybe that's just his natural running style. I mean, some Maybe. of these footballers do have a unique uh, gait and stride. And he was moving rapidly then as he came off the field too, but you know, he didn't like he was fully comfortable. And Adams has called on to hand the ball under pressure from summer school with his first touch of the ball. Theodoropoulos with a touch there into Dom Fowler. Midfield scrap in shoes. Who's going to come away with the ball? Salmon went in with the studs showing there, and we're going to see the yellow card come out of the pocket for Alex Salmon for that tackle. He went flying in there on Dom Fowler, who's certainly a player who's ex experienced maybe even worse challenges than that in his day, but... The studs were showing there, and that made the decision pretty easy for Ross Clark to reach for the notebook. Yeah, easy decision there for for the referee, right in front of us, Steve. Well, this time we see the free kick not lumped into the box as the central defender stayed at home. Walker trying to repel that one. Fowler picks it up. Such a handy player he is. Should I say crucial player? Now he's Owen Ashton. Yeah, Avertoon looks like he's been re released into a more advanced role in the midfield three in the last few minutes. Yeah, I think Luke Jagger will sit in in, in deeper in, role. Yeah, where he where he was. Yep. So, Jago just sitting in front of Doyle and Adams as well. He's also come onto the field. And Doyle's going to continue on his march into the opposing half here until he goes to ground. Hope with the ball. Salmon now looking to play a 1-2 with Hope. Those two seem to work together so often. Not successful that time. Despite all of those ball boys that you pointed out. <laughs> Luke Jago plays ball boy there. <laughs> Not sure if those ball boys are frozen or bored or both. I'm not too sure. But no, there's plenty of good football action happening in this second half. The tempo's up. And when you can hear all the players from this, um, what do we say, 20-meter high scaffold that we're on here, that means that there's a lot of intensity out there. Yeah, it's... Uh 23 minutes left in this game, Steve. Plenty of uh, plenty of opportunities. Nikolaitis clips that one high into the sky. Well, Adams won the header. It was turned out to go behind him. Lampard. Kamara has floated across now to the left-hand side. Throwing decision goes the way of the men in yellow. Zara to take the throw. Likely target is Shepard. And Summerskill's on the overlap. He's had the perfect game. Can he cap it off with a goal, perhaps, Brian Summerskill? Oh, he's already scored, Steve. He scored from the free kick. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, he's on for a second. He's, uh... Can he cap it off with a goal for an <laughs> open play? Sorry. Good to see that I'm on the ball tonight and you're here to uh, pick up the pieces for me. Nicolaitis. Still he goes. Dion Nicolaitis, Theodoropoulos, Walker trying to win it back, and he wins his side a goal kick. Well, he has been a standout tonight, as we were talking about, Brian Simon. Oh, he, has, he has had a great He's game tonight. He's had some sort of game. He, this looks really high on confidence at the moment. Over two. Sent forward by Doyle. It's going to cross the touchline. Stephen Downs has a little bit to say. Yeah, a little bit, like I said, in the first uh, first period, Steve, about getting the ball down between the lines and, and getting it into those wide areas as they did in the first sort of 10 minutes of this half. 
I think that's what he's instructing his uh, his his uh, his soldiers to do. Jago. He's got James Doyle in space, and then Lampard out in front of the grandstand. Keep it moving and use the width as a call from Stephen Downs, but they turn the ball over. Well, tenacity from Mamadi Kamara, who wins the ball back, running at Melan Roberts. There's no way around him, though. It's a big frame to get around that one. He's a big unit, and he held his position well there. Just watching the ball, not distracted by the dancing feet of Mamadi Kamara. He won it back easily. He's Abitu. Gully trying to find a way through. Here we go with Jeremy Walker's wide here again. Well, he's getting further and further forward, isn't he, Jeremy Walker? He's Brooks. A lot of chit-chat out there on the field, as you'll be able to hear through our effects, Mike. <laughs> One or two questions about that return pass by <laughs> Luke Adams. I think in his defence he could say, well, cent central defenders don't take throw-ins, no, exactly. so of course that wasn't what I was doing. Shepard now. <laughs> Ashton. Heidelberg content to just take the ball out wide and try and enjoy a little bit of possession. They've been without the ball for large periods they have. in recent moments. You're in no hurry to take this throne as Zara wanders over to take it. He's one or two people in the crowd telling him to hurry up. And it's still 2-1 here. Zara at summer school with goals and to Godoy with the goal for Green Gully. Doyle for Hope. That midfield three for Gully really seemed to rotate between who plays in the deepest position. That's never one player for too long, it seems. And yeah, that's uh, that's something worked on in uh, on the training ground for for weeks at a time, Steve, because that yeah. uh, it just doesn't happen. That you've got to you've got to work on that, and uh, they do do it really well. The three of them, Josh Hope, uh, Luke Jago, and uh, Abito in the middle of the park, that they do uh, they do rotate really well, and it uh, it does cause problem for the opposition because they don't know when to when to go and when to sit. Looked like a bit of a push there. Referee didn't give it. Oh, he's going to give the handball against Luke Jago here. We saw that one from our commentary position. Still the chit-chat continues in front of us now from the technical area of Green Gully this time. Also on the field you can hear... James Doyle and co organising the defence. I thought Brian Summerskill was uh, lining up for another uh, another ins. Well, zero tolerance here from Ross Clark on time wasting. Dion Nicolaitis feels a little bit aggrieved. <laughs> In comes the free kick. Picked up by Ethan Brooks, who's going to come surging forward with the hair flowing out behind him. Running at Nicolaitis, who's now on a yellow card, so he'll have to be careful. Perhaps Green Gully might target the young left back. They've played the ball out this side quite a lot, as it is, with Walker getting forward more and more the right back. Here's Salmon in a good pocket of space. He's going to dink it in for Kamara. Good first touch. And off the crossbar again, and Kamara can put it away this time. It's 2-2. Kamara's hit the post and scored in the same passage of play. Yeah, look, a good goal uh, from Kamara. Great ball in from Alex Salmon. Uh, initially, uh, good build at play uh, initially from Josh Hope. Uh, ball into Salmon. Salmon spotted Kamara behind the... Uh, the centre back who uh, who made his way into the uh, in behind him without him seeing it and uh, a great great finish second attempt. 
Second attempt, and uh, we said earlier on, Victor Brindcat, you did say it was going to be a 3 2 to Gully. Hey. You, you, uh, you may be very right. It's uh, definitely got a game on now, Steve. Well, Just Mamdi Kamara there. If it first it don't succeed, try and try again. And indeed, you're right. We do have a game on, don't we? Theodoropoulos. Zara. Oh, this is fascinating now to see how this plays out. Summer skill. Trying to test out Walker. Theodoropoulos with the shot, blocked by Adams. Driscoll had made the dive behind him to try and prepare for the save. Nikolaitis runs out of room right in front of us. Well, where does that leave the strategy of uh, George Katsakis now he was thinking he was hanging on to a lead to try and get the cut progression now the sides are all square at the moment it's um, as it stands it's potentially extra time I think uh, I think we might be getting a look at uh, Heidelberg's new sign in Steve he's uh, just been told to warm up so Petratus uh, will be uh, making his way onto the pitch very soon I, th I think well I think it's a good response to Going, uh, conceding that goal and letting the score get back to 2-2. Two -two and That's what the crowd came to see as well. A bit of excitement. Costa Petratos, a new signing. Him and his brother Mackie both signing on with the club this week. Yeah, both had, uh, both had A-League experience, Steve. Costa, the, the older of the brothers, 24 years old, recently come back from uh, from Cyprus, where he played. And previous to that, he had uh, a couple of seasons at Perth, didn't he? And uh, and some time at uh, Newcastle Jets. Yeah, and there, there was a match where all three brothers were on the, on pitch, the pitch for yeah. Newcastle yeah. Jets at one time, which is a good collector's item for the parents. Yeah, you don't see that very often, do you? Not in the professional footballing, in the, in the harsh world that is professional football these days very seldom do you see that Apatou is going to send this one straight to that Heidelberg defence forward by Adams good control by Salmon in a tight space couldn't retain the ball in the end though and Shepard can receive this ball and turn and face forward good play by the centre forward this is summer skill well, that asking Ooh. some questions of the gully defence. Players were charging in to try and profit from any mistakes that might have taken place there. And gully get away with this one. Salmon now going the other way. This is Walker, who sprung forward from defence in a lightning quick time. That's not the best pass, and Summer School picks that one up. Franich for Ashton. This is good play from Heidelberg now. Shepard. Franich, Fowler, striking the ball around Broadmeadows Valley Park with style at the moment. Heidelberg, Theodoropoulos finds Nicolaitis and still he goes. The young left back plays it inside and at the back post. Guess who? <laughs> Turned in by Kane Shepherd. And Dion Nicolaitis will get the portraits of his coach there. Yeah, great run from uh, from the youngster. Um, got the ball in wide. Run at your de run at your defenders. Nothing, you know, defenders certainly don't like anybody running, especially somebody with pace. And uh, great ball into the box. And as you said, Steve, who else? But Kane Shepherd on the end for an easy slot on from uh, from five meters out, and it's uh, three two. Well, he probably won't score an easier goal than that, Kane Shepherd. But could that be the goal that does take Heidelberg United? through to that position in the final four of the Doherty Cup. A date with the Bentley Greens for a place in the final against Avondale or the Oakley Cannons. That's what that goal could deliver. Unless Gully can find something in the next 10 minutes or so, plus stoppages. 
Poor old Victor, Victor Brinkat will be sat on his edge of a chair, Steve, thinking it was going to be 3-2, and it certainly is 3-2, but in the opposite so, uh, opposition, so... so uh, well, Victor should have just written 3-2, ah, not have specified just, the team. <laughs> Here's Adams now, Gully looking to mount a challenge to get themselves back into this game, and look, who could rule it out the way that this game has been played tonight? Oh, they're still in this, Steve. There's still, there's still goals in this, you know. That's right. Very open. We said it was going to be an open game, and it was a bit cagey in the first half, but uh, lots of opportunities, but uh, it's been a cracker. We've certainly got our money's worth tonight, and it's not over yet. Now, here's Doyle and Adams. Jago might have been sold a little bit short there. Adams receives it back. Now, Brooks was the target of that one. Nikolaitis with the header. What a run that was by Nikolaitis to set up that goal that could be the winning goal in this match. Fantastic play by him. His hope. Still hope for Green Gully. Lampard now. Jego, the substitute tonight. Hope looking to play it into the corner. That's a good ball for Walker. Gets it across early. Salmon was arriving, but it was again well repelled by the men in yellow. Here's Walker again looking to get a cross in, and Nikolaitis, who's now high on confidence, has come away with that ball. Well, I think they felt that he got a smack in the face there, but if it was, it was accidental. We are going to see that substitution. It is Costa Petratus who's going to be coming on. Well, he's a slick-looking unit down there, Costa Petratos. Looking forward to seeing what he can bring, not only tonight, but throughout the rest of the season in NPL Victoria with Heidelberg United as they charge towards the finals and the very final stages of the Doherty Cup. Very, very handy pickup. Not one, but two Petratos brothers. And perhaps we might see both of them in uh, the coming weeks as well, lining up side by side. Could see maybe two, you know, two front inches to uh, Petrados is in the same team. You never know. Well, Hope was under pressure there, and Summerskill won the ball back for Shepard. He's got Ashton. Can Ashton put the icing on the cake? It's Owen Ashton. Oh, his touch there just uh, his touch just took him away from goal and wasn't able to get that uh, that shot away. Probably should have hit it. Uh, uh, probably should have hit it first time. I think the substitution is going to come, and I think it will be Brian Summerskill that will be uh, leaving the pitch, Steve. We we'll get our first chance to look at uh, Costa Petratus. Well, he's going to get a round of applause here. I think Brian Summerskill as he leaves the field. Someone, <laughs> I'm not sure if you heard that in the effects, Mike, but a gentleman on the far side in the grandstand has yelled out, best on ground summers, and, well, he's been a key tonight. As, as we were saying, I doubt he's played a better game in the yellow and black of Heidelberg United, and here is that injection into the match of Costa Petrados, former Newcastle Jet. Will he be a Jet for George Katsakis' side as well? In it comes, and Doyle wins the header. Roberts. Jago putting his body on the line to get this one. That will be a gully throw. Not long to go now for Heidelberg to hang on. Brooks wins the free kick. A little bit of a hold was the call by Ross Clark. And Gully are going to make a change themselves. It looks like a chance for Matthew Fletcher. He's going to replace James Doyle. So an attacking switch by Stephen Downs. Sacrificing a central defender. There's nothing to lose here. Yeah, six minutes to go. So whatever the fourth official adds on, it'll be uh, a hectic uh, next five minutes or so, Steve. Well, they're going to try and throw the kitchen sink 
at Heidelberg, but it's going to create the chance for the likes of Costa Petrados and Owen Ashton to seal the deal, perhaps. This is Ashton. He's got a lot of pace as Ashton. Petrados might be offside there. The flake did go up on the far side, but it was passive in the end as it ran through to Liam Driscoll. Keep going is the call from the Green Gully fans on the far side. It's fantastic since the winds dropped down. Not only is it not quite as icy cold, but you can really hear everything that's being yeah. said out there, Craig. And even the sound of the spectators that are yelling out from the far side is clear and present in our ears as well. Kamara, one of the goal scorers for Gully tonight. Going around via the Cape at the moment. This is Abitou. Lampard. Fletcher, the most recent substitute. Well, the defensive shape is looking impenetrable at the moment, at least. Here's Walker. Nicolaitis picking up the loose ball. The pink boots of hope went sliding in to put that one out, and no hurry to take this throw. As we get into the final three and a half or so minutes here of regular time. Petrados with the touch. Theodorophilus. Simon wins it back. Jago can't quite get a hold of it. Brooks for Hope, who's been one of the shining lights for Gully tonight. Walker just lost his footing on the slippery surface there. And Theodorophilus profits. Petratos. Kamara, that might have been a handball by Ashton, but he's allowed to continue. Owen Ashton striding forward through space. Petratos, will we see him try his luck perhaps? Ashton slid in and met solidly by Lampard, and he stays down. We hope that he's okay. Green Gully's going to keep playing, though. Ashton is getting back up to his feet, so that's good to see. Here's Abitou. Lampard now. There's no way through still for Green Gully through this... Well set, Heidelberg United defence. And the turnover, Steve. Yeah, it's uh, exactly that, what you said. It's uh, very organised, very disciplined Heidelberg uh, defence in transition of losing the ball there. Got all the men behind. Made it very difficult for uh, for Gully to, to break. But here we go with... Uh, Gully on this right-hand side. Here's Jago. He's been the architect to a lot of the successes of Gully this season. What can he conjure up himself? Here's Hope. Josh Hope. Under pressure from Joey Franich. That's a good ball, though, for Ethan Brooks, who pops it inside for Fletcher. Oh. And the equaliser was beckoning there to Matthew Fletcher, the substitute. Sorry shot, deflected over, and Nick Eris has done a sensational piece of work to keep that one out, but... Also, perhaps, cop a bit of a nasty one himself as he's going to perhaps require some treatment on the field here, the young goalkeeper. Yeah, fantastic passage of play again from Gully and uh, um, fair play to uh, to young Nick Harris through everything at that, didn't he? Got himself injured, but uh, certainly certainly uh, stopped a, a certain goal there in, in uh, almost the end of this game, Steve. So, uh, yeah, fantastic match saving uh, clearance there from the, from the young keeper. But good football from from uh, from Gully. They've done that for a few times in the second half, Steve, where they've they managed to get the ball in behind and uh, balls into that box um, for a 1v1. And, yeah, this time they weren't so fortunate. Well, I think you've summed it up well there, and it's just very good quality cup football action on this Tuesday night by both sides. Is that plane that's just come yeah, below us, Steve? The, that's, we were told about the quarter past nine flight <laughs> coming in from Newcastle. We haven't had so many planes fly over tonight. There might be a few more cancellations perhaps in the sky at the moment. Now, anyway, the result... 
of that save by Nick Eris. Of course, will be a corner kick for Gully, and it looks like their number nine, Alex Salmon, is over there. Hands on hips under that willow tree in the corner. They're going to send everyone forward, and it's all hands on deck in defence. Even Liam Driscoll's come up to the halfway, and he thought about going in there too, perhaps a little bit early for that. That's a little bit too flat, that one. Well repelled by that Heidelberg United defence. Walker, that might be offside yep, against offside. Alex Salmon, and it is. Walker, I think, had regret for that decision to switch the ball out there as soon as it left his boot when he realised that Salmon was returning from the offside position. Yeah, I think Alex Salmon knew as well as soon as that ball there. Uh, looks like we've got four minutes, Steve. Four minutes, thanks to our fourth official. Four minutes. So, Yeah, there's been a few substitutions, hasn't yeah. there? You know, 30 seconds of substitution, probably been four to f uh, what we, six substitutions we had. So, yeah. Four minutes for, for Green Gully to find something, to pull a rabbit out of the hat. Well, speaking of finding something, those Heidelberg fans have found voice on the far side. Now here's Petrados. Theodoropoulos. And they go for the corner flag, perhaps. Trying to lead Jeremy Walker a merry dance. Brooks over to offer some support, and he's done well there, Ethan Brooks. But that's not the best pass straight to Joey Franich. Gives it straight back to Brooks again. What can Gully mount here? That pass is too long for Jago. Oh, the move's broken down there a couple of times in a row. Shepard. That's great vision from Shepard. Petratos. He's got Ashton. On oh, the far side again. his first touch lets him down. Owen Ashton had it spent before he got it. Yeah, that's not the first time uh, Owen Ashton has done that this evening. His, uh, his touch has, uh, has been a little off. Well, it turns into a wrestle by the corner flag and resulting free kick. Go to Jordan Lampard and Green Gully. And a yellow card for uh, for Owen Ashton there for kicking the ball kicking the ball away. Yep, Ross Clark certainly on top of that one. He's not a man who came down in the last shower. Though he does like to have the look of that just stepped out of the shower look with his hair though, Ross Clark. <laughs> Nicolaitis with the throw right in front of his manager, who's impressed with that assist that he laid on for Kane Shepherd, which looks like will be the match-winning moment tonight after the sides were locked at 2-2 in the yeah. latter stages of this second half. Time's almost up for Gully. Yeah, and uh, Ross Clark is uh, just telling everybody he's uh, he stopped the watch. Around a minute to go, Petrados. It needs to happen now if it's going to happen at all for Gully. They need to get the ball up, up further up the pitch. Oh, here they go, Fletcher. Forced to go back though, and all oh, those yellow shirts will get behind the ball again. Well, the ball forward by Lampard was unsuccessful, and now Shepard's running. At the defence, and he fires a pot shot over the crossbar. So, well, he's given possession back to Gully. Maybe they can get the ball forward one more time as the whistles start to sound over in the grandstand. Adams is going to smash this one over the top. Salmon is the obvious target. Flicked on, and Kamara was not on the same page, and that will disappoint Stephen Downs. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to have to... Uh gamble there aren't you that uh, the big Alex uh, Salmon is going to get some kind of, uh, of touch on that and indeed he had done as and well he did, so. yeah. well, you can hear the uh, crowd on that far side it sounds like we're at Olympic Village at the moment Craig yes they certainly found their voices obviously they've come down from the uh, from the bar upstairs and they've uh, found their voices it, it seems that the burgers will be uh, making their way into that semi-final well, a date with the Bentley Greens beckons as Petratos looks to get on the end of this ball. Walker mops up. He's not offside there. Flag stays down. Yeah. Costa Petratos. Oh, well played. Liam Driscoll using his feet to good effect. Ashton. They're queuing up in the middle. It's away by Adams. Theodoropoulos with the curler and a great save again 
by Driscoll, and offside. that is offside against Ashton. The goal will not stand for Kane Shepherd. Last chance saloon now. Jago. Hope. He's got to go. With the whistle come out. Petratos. He's looked good on his debut tonight. Just a few minutes off the bench. Shepard's going to head for the corner flag now, surely. And he won't need to because it's full time and Hardenberg United will go through and confirm their place in the final four of the Doherty Cup and go on to play the Bentley Greens. And Green Gully will bow out at this point and they can focus their attentions on the league football that stands ahead for them this Friday night, Craig. Yeah, look, a great game of football, that, Steve. A typical, typical cup toy, end-to-end, uh, -end, plenty of opportunities, plenty of talking points. Um, but it was uh, Heidelberg that uh, just showed that little bit, a little bit more and, uh, and got that third goal uh, to send them through to, uh, to a Doherty Cup semi-final in just a few weeks' time. Well, a deserved win, I think, on the balance of play in the end for George Katsakis' side. They made the early running and skipped ahead to a 2-0 lead. They got pegged back to 2-2, and then in the end it was Kane Shepherd coming off the bench to apply the simplest finish, which gets his side through. And for Stephen Downs' Green Gully side, well, in terms of the Cup campaign, all is not lost with them still being in the national round of 32 That's for the right. Australia Cup. So they've still got lots to look forward to, given the fact that these Cup competitions do have a doubling up uh, component, their cup run is not not uh, all to no avail, you would say, at this point in time. We look forward to seeing who they draw in the national round of 32, which will be very exciting. But another side that will be in the hat for that round of 32 will be Heidelberg United. And also, they are into that final four of the Doherty Cup. We look forward to seeing how they go in their match against the Bentley Greens and the other semi-final that will be the Oakley Cannons against Avondale with that big Doherty Cup final coming your way. Uh, on uh, August the 7th, so not far away at all. Lots of good football coming up in uh, all across Victoria, not only in the league but in the Cup as well. So really getting to the pointy end of the season in all competitions. Lots to look forward to coming up, Craig. It's been a pleasure working alongside you this evening as well as Adam behind the camera who's uh, just reaching for the hot pack now, I think. <laughs> Likewise, Steve, like I said, it was a great game, a great Cup tie. Um, congratulations to Heidelberg who... Uh, We'll celebrate there with their uh, with their fans and uh, deservedly go through to uh, to the semi final of the uh, Doherty Cup. And we'll look forward to that in the in the next week or so. Well, that's it. Well, that's a wrap from Broadmeadows Valley Park, where the goals from Adrian Zara, Brian Summerskill, and Kane Shepherd for Hollenberg United were too much for Green Gully, who scored goals through Kyo de Godoy and also Marmani Kamara. A three-two win. We've been thoroughly entertained, and we thank you for your company. And we will bid you a good evening from Broadmeadows Valley Park in this Doherty Cup playoff match where the final score is Hodderberg United 3, Green Gully 2 from uh, both myself, Steve Curtin and Craig Filer and all the production team behind this one. A good evening and we look forward to bringing you more matches in uh, NPL Victoria this weekend. But uh, from Broadmeadows Valley Park, it is good night. <laughs>